ma Africa ma ke ka le bitsona ke iba wa hantse so ibile ke a mohela nna non la rona le le tshaba ditsa ba re ke sifono o msebenzi a ke ratse ba re covid 19 e fihlile ya re tara ka nyama boko bona re lahlelwa ke mesebetsi ba ba rona we've lost our furniture we've lost our jobs companies are retrenching people look covid 19 ke bana ba stopise di charity because of corruption jo ne re tsa joang go tv africa that is why it came with a show at har to save her to ba leng re ba hloka mesebetsi le ba ba leng re ba batla bula di khobe empa chalete ha e yo jo le he ke kopone ka tlatse nena o tlotse ba hore re tlo ruta ntotseng a to rena ke manane a feng o ka yetsang hore o fumana mosebetsi le hore hape o fumana tshelete ya o qala khobe ya today we are visiting the first company ya rona e leng hore e ruta batho ntotseng a ta hore na ba etsa jo hang ke tsela e feng e tshwantse ba yeng ke jalo dikopo o lone tsebe jalo ha rona tsere Welcome, Africa Matla. You're still watching. It's Funo Umsebenzi. And next to me, I have a very handsome gentleman who's also an entrepreneur. This man, he's so many wins. He's got so much under his profile. And uh, I don't know what to say. I am so excited to be here. Kwandile as Kosana, right? Yes, yes. Kwan How are you, sir? Thank you so much for having me on the show. I am so good. Please don't make me blush because today we are discussing a very serious issue, which is unemployment. So better make sure that you don't make me blush, all right? No, no. no, no. <laughs> so I can see that you're wearing a beautiful, um, you know, top. It's written Rudo Institute. Yeah. Can you please tell us a little bit about Rudo Institute before we come to you? Because I know that you've got so much to tell about yeah. yourself. Yeah. So Rudo Institute started in 2018. But the whole business in education started in 2005. Mm -hmm. So basically, I come from Davidson, um, one of the disadvantaged communities uh, that exists in the city of Ekuruleni. But then we realized that I was fortunate enough to go to certain schools and then go to varsity. But like most of my friends, uh, most of my colleagues, didn't get the opportunity to go to varsity. Mm -hmm. But when we started to interrogate some of the issues that lead them not to go into varsity, we realized that some of our schools are not resourced. So by resourced, I mean they don't have libraries, they don't have books, they don't have this and that. Mm -hmm. So we made it our cause to make sure that these schools have um, libraries. So we went door to door asking for book donations. And then it resulted in us doing a whole campaign with 702, uh, Ready Tlavi, and then she promoted us. Mm -hmm. uh, we landed up with over 2 million books with different sources. So 2 million? 2 million books. Oh um, then we asked ourselves, what do we do with 2 million books? So we established 14 libraries across the country, and then two of which we were fortunate enough to do them live on TV with uh, Zola. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that was great. Um, last year, we launched one in Tembisa, and hopefully we're going to do more projects with them. Yeah. But when we realized that now that we've established these libraries, mm -hmm. what's next? Mm -hmm. We realized that the reason why people aren't able to get employed, yeah. the reason why some of our people get certain jobs and not other jobs is because uh, they are not employable because they don't have necessary skills or qualifications or so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then some of them, the reason why they earn so le low salaries is because of the things that they've studied. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why they study those things is because there's no institution of higher education and training in the city of Ekuruleni yeah. that caters for that niche. Mm -hmm. And also we may have another conversation to say the reason why people aren't going to university is because it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And people that come from low income houses don't have the money to. Yeah. Uh, to, to fund their studies. So we made it our business to establish uh, this training institution in a township called Davidson. Mm -hmm. And our next five year to 10 year dream is to establish a university in Davidson mm -hmm. and have satellites in other townships across the country and then move into the yeah. SADC region. Yeah, so basically that's our journey in education. Yeah. That's a very interesting story. But before we dig deeper into Rudo Institute, yeah. let's go back to Kwandile. Yes. Who yes. was Kwandile before you became the Rudo Institute um, director, I guess? Yes. So, so um, I think my names are uh, very significant to the things that I'm doing today. So my name is Gwandile. My I'm the first grandchild um, to my grandfather. So he gave me the name because I was, ex I was expanding the family brand and the family yeah. name. And my next name is Mhlaba. So my other grandfather, who was blind at the time, said he would travel the world through me because he wasn't afforded the opportunity to travel the world. Mm -hmm. So he, my name is Gwandile Mhlaba. And Sikosana is with the kingship of the Ndebele uh, tribe. Mm -hmm. um, the Sikosana uh, family is third to, third to the throne. So you're from so, the royal family. So yeah, so there's 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 royal blood there. Mm -hmm. There's also the expansion. There's also the traveling and the exploring of the world. Wow. So that's my purpose to make mm -hmm. sure that I travel the world. And when I travel, I come back and I teach my people what I've traveled. 
I need to expand on the lives of people. I need to expand on my lives, on my own life as well. And then also I need to spread the royal blood amongst the people that I encounter. On Are you also a pastor? No, I'm not a okay. pastor. No, I just, just wanted to make sure no, of I'm that. No, I'm not a pastor. No. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, earlier on when I was talking to you just offline, you yeah, told yeah. me that you're studying like towards being a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about that and why, why, why being a lawyer? Um, so there was a lot of injustices that I experienced as a kid. As I said, a lot of people living in shacks, a lot of people not having access to education. So I'm not studying law to be a lawyer, but I'm studying law to have the, the background of law so that mm -hmm. initially I want to be the president of the Republic of South Africa. Really? So I want to be an educated president. I want to know about human rights. I want to advocate for these things with having the background. Wow. So when I'm here today speaking to you guys, this is a campaign. I want people to watch me and to watch the moves that I'm making so that in the next five years, next 10 years, next 20 years, mm. when I lobby the country to be the president, they have journeyed with me yeah. Um, yeah. in this process of bettering the lives I of people. I hope I'll so. be hired. Um, um, I am also campaigning. Yeah, so, so I mean, with your skills, uh, yeah. it's going to come in handy. So we'll see. We'll see how we, we, we do this thing. Now. Yeah. Well, let's go back to Rural Institute. Um, yeah. I know that you're working with a couple of uh, foundations and companies as well, but I know that uh, you've also worked with Cyril Ramaphosa Foundation. What are you yeah. guys doing with them? So with the Cyril Ramaphosa Foundation, we're doing the business ideation program. So basically, we realize that um, a lot of people have ideas, but they don't know how to turn their ideas into businesses. Mm. So we did a whole program where we're teaching them how to turn their business ideas into businesses. And when they're ready, I mean, Sir Ramaphosa does found, like, incredible work mm. in the entrepreneurial landscape. So they have this fund, it's called the Black Umbrella Fund. So basically, if you've done an ideation program with them, then you are able to access the funds that they have. Okay. And with the fund, they not only give you the money to start your business, but also they offer you offer space. If you need a car because you're doing a logistics company, they yeah. can offer those things to you. Yeah. And I mean, when, when you work for the Suram Posa Foundation or when you work with the Suram Posa Foundation, yeah. you get to every now and then meet the president and meet the people that work with the president. And they so might right. also expose you to other opportunities. Mm. Because the idea is for you to start a business and get opportunities. I don't think people are hungry for money. They're just hungry for opportunity. Mm. So if you give people opportunities, they'll be able to propel to the next level. Mm. Yeah. But what were some of the challenges when you guys were doing the program that you've identified, and especially among young black um, you know, uh, businessmen and women, that you thought they need to fix? Uh, because you said people are looking for opportunities, but it's yeah. not just about, about opportunities, about legacy as well. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think one of which is just like the mentality that we have. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people have brilliant ideas. We have a lot of knowledgeable people, very smart intellectuals. Yeah. But not a, people, not a lot of people are in it for the long run. So mm. people just want to make like quick bucks. Yeah. That's why they're joining like weird programs because they think they're going to make money and it's, it's going to be rich overnight. It doesn't work mm. like that. And awesome. also, I realized that a lot of us as entrepreneurs working within a township sort of like landscape, uh, we don't um, pay attention to processes or systems. Yeah. We don't pay attention to the back end. Mm. So a lot of people want to start a business and sell the idea. Mm. But they don't focus on like the entrepreneurial law, the registering of their patents, their trademarks. They don't focus on developing accounting systems for themselves. Mm. They don't focus on um, making sure that their businesses run well, that they teach the next generation about their business. Because mm. succession is a very important thing in business. Yeah. You can't just die and then the business dies. Mm. You have to teach another person so that your business can live the test of time. I mean, exactly. earlier on we were talking about unemployment. Mm. The, uh, that's also a resultant of unemployment because mm. it's not like young people back in the 80s or back in the 60s didn't start businesses. They started mm. businesses, but you know, those businesses are shut down. Yeah. And that contributes to unemployment. But if that person had a succession plan for the next 20 years, yeah. then that business would have been alive, wouldn't employ so many people. So mm -hmm. those are some of the struggles that we're experiencing, but we're going to solve them. But isn't it because uh, a majority of black people or young black uh, people, they don't want to really read, you yeah. know? I um, mean, it's like, <laughs> uh, it's like there are such a huge enemies of, 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 of books yeah. And I'm not too sure if this is how we're born or is it because of uh, the struggles that we went through. Yeah. Um, what is your opinion on that? So, so my opinion is uh, twofold. So one, I know that like, we don't read. And yeah. then, but the next um, reason is that let's look into the cost of reading. Mm. Like a book, 
if you want to buy a book, it can cost about 150, 300 rand. Yeah. Would you rather buy groceries with 150 rand when you're struggling, mm. or would you rather buy a book? No? Mm. And then also, we've always been reading. It's just that the kind of material that we had access to yeah. wasn't the, 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 the resources that the people have today. Mm. I mean, our people, I've always read magazines. I didn't realize that reading a magazine is equal to reading a novel. It's just mm. that it's short stories talks about a specific thing instead of maybe knowledge on running businesses or so on and so forth. Yeah. Because you can be a reader and mm -hmm. not be informed in certain things. Yeah. If you're reading love stories, say mm -hmm. for instance, you're not going to know a lot about entrepreneurship. Yeah. But you, if you're going to delve around entrepreneurship, this, that, this, that, mm -hmm. then you're going to be an all-rounded, knowledgeable person. Yeah. So also we need to look into, when we say reading, what kind of literature are we engaged in? Mm -hmm. So I think for us as a developing society, we need to sort of like talk about what kind of books do people need to read in order yeah. for them to develop in their own spaces. Mm. Yeah. You know, a lot of people at home, I know they want uh, me to ask this question again. Um, they've heard, uh, you know, your story about Sri Ramaphosa's program. And I think it's a very quite interesting one. Yeah. How do I get involved in the program if I want to join in? Yeah, so uh, we not only do programs with uh, Sri Ramaphosa Foundation, we've done mm. some with Growth Point, we've done some with DGNT. Uh, we've done some programs with Activate. We've done some with um, quite a lot of other institutions. Wow. So basically, if they follow us on social media, we're able to engage with them. And then also mm. maybe if they drop us like an email, all our details are on our social media pages. Mm. Drop us an email, we'll have them part of our database. Then every now and then when we have something new, we'll talk yeah. about it, we'll share it. Because yeah. also like, we're going to develop a program with Microsoft now. Yeah, yeah. When that happens, we're going to share that information with the people. Mm, so mm. it's all about let's work together, let's collaborate and see how best mm, we can better mm. each other's lives. Yeah. I know today you guys, you guys were registering young people into yes. one of your, I don't know, leadership program yes, yes. with ATG. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about that. So um, we're running a program, Entrepreneurship mm. Skills Co uh, yeah. Program, which is a learnership. So basically, with the learnership, we want people that wouldn't have had an opportunity to go to UJ, Verts, or Gibbs to study business development. Mm -hmm. So we're going to teach them everything from scratch, business ideation, all the way to the complexities of registering mm -hmm. a, a patent. We're going to, uh, as I said, um, my, my business partner is a legal graduate, yeah. um, part of the board membership. There's, there's lawyers, there's accountants, there's lecturers. So mm -hmm. we're going to give you all those expertise when you form part of the program so that yeah. you can use that. Say, for instance, we're going to teach you all about writing contracts. And so for three months, you're in class. Yeah. Then for nine months, you're in practice. So in practice, we're going to teach you about um, how to get funding for your business, mm. how to write contracts, how to ensure that you indemnify yourself from certain things, mm. how to make sure that you've got non-disclosure agreements. Because yeah. also, when you walk into this room and you share ideas, mm. what's going to happen if someone takes your idea and then runs with it, you mm. know? So you have mm. to have indemnity forms. You have yeah. to have non-disclosure agreements so that you can protect yourself. And mm -hmm. a lot of people take those things for granted because they're thinking, oh, I'm a small business, I don't have money to pay a lawyer mm -hmm. or what. But mm -hmm. we will teach those things so that you yeah. can do it yourself. And then part of also the program, we'll teach them about branding, we'll teach them about marketing, we'll teach them about how they can make sure BEE works for their advantage. We can mm -hmm. teach them about uh, so many other things. Yeah, yeah. You know, one person at home would say, I have gone through such a similar program with um, NYDA yeah. or CETA. How are you guys different? Because, I mean, we've had mm. a lot of this where people, they study, study 12 months. After that, they're back at home, still unemployed yeah. or still not having even money to start a business. So how are you guys different? So our thing is different because we are not training you to be a student, and that's that. Mm. Our thing, our whole philosophy is we want every student that's formed part of the program to start a business, mm -hmm. whether it be a side hustle or something that you focus on full time. Yeah. So basically what we teach is practice. Mm -hmm. We're not going to teach you business development based on business developments of other people. We're going to teach you, we're going to have facilitators and tutors that will focus on your individual business. Mm -hmm. So when you go out, you have a business plan, and then when we take you to, to NYDA to get funding, or we take you to CETA or CIFA, or we take you to the National Empowerment Fund, you go there already with a a strong business case mm. and if you need assistance maybe they're saying oh your business is not ready to get one million rand or whatever the case may mm. be we will help you tweak your business plan so that you are ready for that kind of funding so if i get you straight um if i want to join this program yeah. i need to have a business idea already so even if you don't have a business idea written down or whatever yeah. 
when you come here, we're going to unearth some of your passions. We've got this thing that we do. It's called theory of change. Yeah. Basically, we develop what matters to you and what you think the world should look like mm. in the next four or five years. That's and then within great. that, we've got tools that we use to ensure that we get to understand what business you'd be passionate about should mm. you want to start a business. Mm. And that, in most cases, births the idea. Yeah. Right. So, so you have to have an idea or not, mm -hmm. but we'll help you. Like after that, you, yeah. there's no way you can start the program and not have an idea. So how do you incorporate internet evolution in, in, in all of this? Because yeah. we are so well aware that I might have an idea, but it might be, it might be all dated because, you know, COVID-19 came and yeah. everything changed and yeah. everybody has to adjust. So how are you guys helping us in that regard? So as I said, we are feeder to a couple of other institutions. Also, we yeah. are feeder to Transnet. So basically, Mm. our students we're going to take them through a process where if they want to do automation I'm just making an example yeah. there's now um, people do on, doing Legos through D, 3D mm -hmm. printers so basically what we're going to do is we're going to ensure that they go through that process yeah. and then they get to use their tools they have 3D mm -hmm. printers they have all the tools yeah. so basically if you want to play in the fourth industrial revolution space and you want to do automation or whatever the case may mm. be they will take you through that process i mean yeah. there's a program that the city of akurilani did a couple of um, months back yeah. where they were teaching people how to get drone licenses so mm. those are the kind of things we want to engage in because nice. in as much as we want to talk about the fourth industrial revolution mm. we aren't there as a country mm. right there's a few things that still need to be done i mean there's a few communities that still don't have internet mm. So we want to cater for those guys. Also, we want to cater for the guys that are ready for the fourth industrial revolution mm -hmm. to say, we are ready. So that's why we feed different institutions with different programs so mm -hmm. that if you're ready for this particular thing, you can go here. If yeah. you're ready for this, you can go here. Yeah. So that's why we took a very uh, broad idea of the kind of support that mm -hmm. we want to initiate for these students. Someone who's 45 years old is watching at home yeah. and she or he's asking himself, Am I also part of this? Can I be accommodated? Or it's only for people between the age of 18 to 35? Yeah. So for this learnership, it's mm. only 18 to 27. Right? Mm. But we run numerous programs. So they should check out on our page online. Mm. Because if you're 45, you might not uh, get money from NYDA, CEDA, GDP, yeah. and so on. But there are other institutions that we can mm. take you to. Okay. Like I'll make an example with the National Empowerment Fund. Mm. Like age is not a factor. So if you come and your business is ready for that kind of uh, support, mm -hmm. then we'll take you through that process. Mm -hmm. So it's not an issue of age. It's just that for this particular program, our focus is like young people. Wow, that is so beautiful. Thank you so much for talking to us. It's Thank been a you. pleasure. Roto Institute, guys, if you want to get hold of them, actually, you didn't even tell us your details in yeah. terms of the email address or the website. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so they can WhatsApp me at 081-538-7603. That's also my phone number. Mm -hmm. But also you can find us on social media. On Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, it's Rudo Institute, and also LinkedIn, LinkedIn as well. And then also you can just email us at info at rudoinstitute.org or admin at rudoinstitute.org or guandile at rudoinstitute.org. So whichever platform that you feel comfortable in, we'll be able to have a conversation with you. You don't call after 10 or after seven, <laughs> all right? Please keep it professional. Thank you yeah. so much, Kwandile. It's been a pleasure. And hell, we truly have a job with you. We're going to talk to you about how you do it. We're going to talk to you about how you do it. We're going to talk to you about how you do it. We're going to talk after 10 o'clock. All right, after the break, we are giving you guys opportunities in terms of funding and other job opportunities that are available in the country. So stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still watching. Spoonum Sevens in the Mutless Quandilus Corsano for the institution of Nabaita, which the Boboka can be seven years and Jolly to Copa Oscar was singing now. Go say it's a Maya Ulo apply a year of setting Yabona or Hono Bonor Nakimi at the Ifing or Bafana Gayola. Marhe, Hansikiliman in the Noniki, Lekata Maya Garmano, Pelekita Mona, Eric Cheche, Hanging Litra, Tinkiru Korna. What are people struggling with exactly? And especially those that have been affected by COVID 19, what are they saying? So please, let's take a look. Mafrika ma tla ke mele pa balopela ka monaki ba tlo rena ma ikutlo ha a jwang ha o tlo ha holo jwang ho unemployment a o sile kae ke teng le kae mo ba ke o bona botse ba e o rege empa ho rege a kere a o ne a ya go tsaga shapo next next ga re ga ithe ka ba ne number 1 unemployment i i a ya lokela rona 
mkaring uh, emotionally it laka di ntse ngata ibaka depression stress and ka fela di lotse is a lot to take in and having to look after other people and turning the lap as a whole it's not easy aku je ona le family ka popela le mo a ke dula le mama le ntate mgo le bana ba ko gae le survivor jong a manje ke mama le ntate mgo lo fela then yeah that's it go la pele a mama o sa sebetsa but ntate mgo lo ke pension so that's khashebile bona fela ha e sa le lockdown ina e qala covid 19 re hlasela o khopa jong Uh, it has been hard because uh, mama le ena ko msebetseng na emisitswe due to covid and training and since as a beleza a private institute uh, there's no income coming in go more more throughout the months so it has been really hard i would like you to face the camera because one of our duties as good tv africa we are trying to assist people that are unemployed and trying to get the companies that have got those opportunities to assist people like you so maybe just look at the camera tell them your qualifications and tell them ukuthi ana o batla msebetsi ka pa o ipatlala fela o dilela lapeng ah okay na by profession i'm a i'm an ecd practitioner um i studied uh, ecd which is teaching for in foundation phase grade R to grade 4 and uh, yeah and I've done uh, a few things on the side uh, yeah that's it and you are looking for a job or not I am looking for a job I am looking for a job and unfortunately now it has been a little hard to do so yeah Ma Africa ma tle le utlwile and this pandemic it seems like it has affected a lot of us some of us have been retrenched from works some of us we don't even have enough salaries because why companies are also battling as well UIF on the other side they have actually paused the payment what do we do as South Africans but i always believe that unity is power we can beat this thing only if we work together so companies that are also availing themselves giving those vacancies please do so good tv africa is waiting for you to help people like babalo please now this is the time that i think we should just forget about all our problems and let's focus on the light because where there's a mist there is always a light so today i'm just going to share with you some of the opportunities that we have from different companies because as good tv africa and as funom servants it is our duty to make sure that you guys you don't actually stress that much so i'm going to start with the first one that is available here it is coming from the company called the dextech project as you can see on my screen they are looking for a sales person with proper knowledge in the following areas cctv cameras access control alarm system electric fencing and voip so please if you do have your cv in place make sure that you email your cv at this address it is only derek at destechprojects.co.za there is no closing date on this one so i believe that they are looking as for many people as they can So the next one that we have here it is coming from SFG Engineering and they are looking for the tower crane operator and lift coordinator. So this contract is for 2021 but they are looking for that particular person as in like right now. So if you do have the required skill please do email your CV to this address right here michelle at sfgengineering.co.za. They also don't have the closing date so I guess they are waiting for you. The next company that is seeking for people that are looking for employment is OPG Consulting. They are looking for a professional office administrator and it is stated here that you need to be fluent in Afrikaans and English and your communication skills they must be on point. So if you are interested in this job, please do email your CV to ir@opgconsulting.co.za. Never make a mistake of misspelling their email address, please my people. 
Bible. And then we have the one coming from Dynamic Plastics in Jamiston, and they're looking for a receptionist. But the receptionist must be fluent also in English and Africans. If you do have what it takes, if you do have all the skills required, please do email your CV to hr at dynamicsplastics.co.za. Time. And the next company, it is called Chandel. Actually, it's not a Chandel. It's a family that they're looking for a very professional family housekeeper. And you would be earning between 8,000 and 10,000 rand per month. So to apply, please email your CV to Chandel at upersontutors.co.za. It is right here on the screen. So please don't get it wrong. Also, there is no closing date. So how do you know the closing date? So how do you know the closing date? So how do you know the closing date? third one is coming from Sosolbeck. Uh, Sosolbeck, I think it's in Pumalanga. And this company is called Texal Arms. And they're looking for security officers mainly for two males and one female. You must have a great C. And we all know what a CIRA is, right? And you must be able to speak Afrikaans and English. And most importantly, have your own transport. Please do apply. And the email address, it's right here on my screen. It's jan at techsalams.co.za. Also, they don't have the closing date. And uh, moving forward, I think this one is the last one that we have right here. In East London, it's a base company that is based there, and they are looking for HR generalist. And this person, he or she, will be responsible for a wide range of HR support and advice. But then the requirements, you need two years of experience, right? A degree or diploma in HR. You must also have a knowledge in relevant religious in terms of HR. So please, if you do have all these requirements in terms of uh, the job spec, please email your CV to tolomni at senimanzi.co.za. Please just get this one right because it's also beating me up. It's written tolomni at senimanzi.co.za. It is right here on my screen. Well, but I think it's a little bit of 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 until next time, let's meet again. Now,